So what, what we're dealing with here, and this is the first time I've done that in these uh, sessions, is an interior scene. Um, it's quite busy, uh, figures and stands and uh, lights and, and all sorts of things. And it has, of course, this dominant red color about it, which is uh, uh, the screens hanging down and they are reflected onto the, uh, the wet floor uh, as well. So it's a, it's a very powerfully red uh, picture. I um, No apologies for it being uh, quite complicated, maybe a bit daunting. And, and that's part of what this particular painting is about, is trying to simplify as much as we can uh, a scene like this, particularly if you're trying to paint a little uh, looser, then that, that's probably a, a good thing to do. So a couple of words about, about the composition and about uh, simplifying it um, before we, we go on. Um, possibly, uh, if, if possibly a, a good thing to look out for if you're wanting to simplify any scene, is, uh, which is complicated especially, is to see if you can uh, get a viewpoint which is against the light, contre jour. Uh, and uh, a lot, not all of this, but a lot of this is against this very strong red light that's coming through. It's uh, so much so it's affecting an awful lot of uh, the rest of the room. But there is also a side light coming in here with, with a different kind of daylight, and that is affecting some of the, the foreground. So it's an interesting, mostly contre jour scene up the top uh, where we have simplified shapes where the figures that are in here are largely silhouetted uh, as indeed are, are a lot of the other uh, bits of um, property that's that's inside the uh, this building and then, and then you've got a, a sort of different light here and and that's really what's interested me uh, is, is this dominant red color, this slight change in light that you get here, and this contre jour feel of uh, a, a lot of the uh, figures and, and things in the building being flattened out into shapes, really. And, and that's, in a sense, what we're looking for to try and help us simplify a composition like this. Now, I'll, I'll go through uh, this in four stages. Uh, I'll, I'm, I think it's a really good idea and if you're able to to work alongside me and paint along uh, I'm very happy for you to change uh, the composition because uh, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to change it in just a moment uh, and after each of these stages I will pause and and allow people to catch up uh, but but there's quite a bit of painting to do today so we, we need to move on so I'm, I'm going to deal with this in uh, four stages. But before, in, in a sense, what I'm doing at the moment, talking about the composition, is part of stage one. Uh, I'm going to change this for all sorts of reasons, uh, very slightly. I'm, I'm not going to put this light here that I'm blocking out, this um, artificial light. I'm, I'm going to leave that out. And I'm also going to uh, take out this bit here in that I'm going to have the red hanging coming down. And one of the reasons for that is because uh, I particularly like this shape, this arch shape, which is seeing the archway through the red blanket that's hanging down. And I quite like to repeat it up here as well. So I'm, I'm going to do those two things. Uh, this uh, fella here, I'm going to turn him around and have him walking towards us just to, give a little bit more intimacy um, to the scene. And I'm probably going to leave this out or maybe just, I, I'm not quite sure I'm gonna handle that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not planning on having a big stack of these white uh, things that, that hold the fish in. I, I've got various bits of white here that I'm probably going to make some use of. So, so that's me thinking about the composition. It's going to be pretty much as this is, other than those those things that I've pointed out. Okay, so um, as as the first step, uh, I'm going to make 
some drawings here. And I'll try and keep this as um, a shorter period of time. It's going to take about four or five minutes, I, I think. There are some things that I'd like to draw in in a little bit of detail just to help me as, as I go on. And I think I'm going to start off by um, just, just being aware, by the way, um, of where um, the eye level is of me. I, I took this photograph. It's about there, I would say, as uh, I've shown with my pencil, running along there. That means because the building is, is going away from, from me, from the, the, the point of view of the person who took the photograph, then uh, everything that's above the eye level is coming down to it very slightly. Uh, the, the lines of where these big hangings are held here, everything else is coming down to that way. And, and this line of uh, lights above the where they're selling the fish, that's coming down to it, but the other way, like that. And then down here, and I think this is probably quite a useful thing to be aware of, where uh, the end of the, the building is, and you can see the light coming through underneath uh, the, the stalls and, and, and so forth. That's ever so slightly going that way. Uh, I exaggerate what I'm doing here. So, so that in terms of the perspective and the eye level of it, that's uh, what I'm looking at. Okay, if, with the drawing, um, I'm, I, I'm uh, going to start off with about here, making a mark where, and you'll see what I'm thinking of doing. This is, and go to about here. This is the, the archway that they are, of course, um, vertical and the the top of the arch uh, is going to be something like it 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 it's interesting because when it you it, you've got these shadows and uh, coming through and they're they're throwing the shapes into different positions it could be something like that i think that's what that's going to be and um i mentioned the the bottom of the the floor uh, I reckon it'll be sort of something, something like that. So I, going up. So I want to leave. Why the um, eye level is important. The eye level is important to help with the perspective of, um, for for instance, uh, it, things above your eye level in a very simplistic way. If they are going away from you, will come down to your eye level. So things are coming that way, I exaggerate, uh, down, down towards the line of your, imagine your eye levels being all the way along, an imaginary line all the way along here. Uh, and, and this row of the, where the lights are is above your eye level, so it's coming down, it's coming down the other way because it's going away from you that way. And, and similarly, below your eye level is the, um, the bot, the where we can see underneath all the, uh, uh, the the fish tanks and everything, and that's going the other way. So, so we've got a, a sort of that and that, uh, and and I'm just being aware of that when I'm, and you'll see as I do my drawing. So, um, let's make a few other little marks for it very roughly. This space here is going to be much smaller because it's going away from me. So let's just uh, try and do it visually, a guesstimate, something like that. And this, the, the top of the arch here, that's all, because I spoke about it going away, going coming down towards me, it's going to be sort of something like that. And that's helpful to work out where the, Top of the arch might be something like that, and uh, I've got another one here. Okay, I can start 
doing some drawings to fit in with this. Let's just um, put in this architectural feature here. And it, that follows on all of the columns. So, it, and because it's above your eye level, that's also coming down ever so slightly. So I know that I can do something I can't see that one, but I can see maybe that one. So I've, I'm, in terms of the drawing, this, the, the, the base is maybe not as a, quite as exaggerated as I made it, something like that. A lot of things get lost in the darkness in, uh, in this picture, which is another help to simplifying it. And then we sort of, Coming up something like that. Okay, uh, the these big hangings are sort of held up here, and one of them runs down this way, and the other one something like that, and it comes to roughly. I, I can adjust that. It comes to roughly about there. Uh, now, I said that I was going to alter this a little bit and have this hanging all the way up, which is different from the photograph. I'll bring it over here. But um, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. It won't make any difference to in connection with what I'm doing. Uh, and, uh, and, and then this awning looks as if it's sort of blowing in the wind a little bit as it's, it's got a different shape all right let's um these are the awnings now one or two other little architectural details that i can put in here now let's go to this side of the picture on the left and we've got this large column uh, and um i want to make that sufficiently in the picture so it's not just hanging out I, i'll put it about here and it goes down to something like that we'll see how that goes the top bit is around like that because it's above us we're looking up to it in terms of perspective and um Let's see if I, I'll bring another column here and then another one here. This, this sort of goes up uh, and there are these big hangings. They obviously have this, they've got this red, these red hangings all the way around to um, hang down as the sun moves around. It's a pretty iconic sort of um, building this. Now, all right, that's, that gets lost in things going here. I'll just switch my drawing around to here. There's, um, there's a column that goes, one of the main columns that sort of hangs, goes down here somehow and it's quite a it goes up like that there's a column that goes there and there's also another column up here somewhere so i'll just make that mark okay um i'm going to put in uh, this lamp, I'll shift it a little bit to here. There's a lamp that hangs down, something like that. And there's another one up here, which I might bring in. And that's in front of that column. So, so I might put that in there. All right, let's have a look at what's going on here. I think um, I'll 
get an idea of the the layout of I, I'll put the I'll put the man in for here I think first uh, where's he gonna be I want, I want his feet to be about here let's see if we can he's coming towards us so he's he's, he's walking towards us a little bit um, shoulders slightly raised I, I don't know if he's going to be big enough let's just see and uh, got one leg out here maybe too exaggerated something like that right let's see if I can base everything else on on him now so we've got these stands and it's slightly above the eye level so I've got they're going that sort of that sort of way um, and and then Here we've got on pallets, we've got something stacked on pallets here. Let's see if I can put that in. And that's, um, they've got all these white polystyrene boxes, they keep the fish in. So let's um, put some of those in. I, I like this because it's a patch of white inside the building so we'll see how we do with that the pallet uh, and then there is um, some sort of a trolley here with now those of you who are drawing along I, I hope you are you're, you're going through this you're putting in um, putting in their own drawings. Uh, just make a few marks there. And the trolley does something like that. Got a wheel. Come back to that later on. Some sort of wheel down there. What else do I need to know about this pallet? Okay, now let's we'll put a couple of, there's a, there's a fella here who's standing in, he's standing in front of the main store. So let's pop him in. Keep the heads small when you're doing these figures. It's, um, it's easy to make the heads too big. So he's, and he he's comes something like down there. I won't get too bogged down. Yeah, that's the sort of relationship working there. So I'm going to put this little fellow in here. He looks a good guy. He's bending over, um, doing some work there. Um, there are all sorts of. Oh, there's another. Let's deal with this. There's uh, another trolley. So let's put that trolley in here. And it's a trolley with wheels on it. There's a trolley like that. Uh, and it's got a wheel on it like that. Um, the bucket. Useful. There, a bucket. And some sort of a pallet stashed up here. That, that, that will, all of these things are just filling up um, the space and making it look cluttered around the back of the market, giving that sort of feel. Right. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but I really don't know. We'll just we'll just make things up, uh, but I do know there's there's various things blocking the light. 
Uh, and that is, that's the main light here. So we've got, I got sticking a little figure in here. Um, he looks kind of sort of tallish guy. And uh, we'll stick another one in here. They're all shopping, doing their shopping. Oh, I made that too big. I'm going to make this a bit lower and bring those figures down a bit. So I'm going to bring that down here. And these two guys can be, they just look a bit tall to me. Figure there. them and then and then there's some other people that look as if they're on the other side of the counter doing their shopping um, so lots of legs uh, and uh, belonging to the, the the things that are holding the fish and um, and then there's all sorts of stuff going on In, in the distance because there's market all sorts of marketplaces in back right let's just see that's probably enough for the moment for me I've got what else do I need to know um, uh, I think have I got what I need here I think yeah I think I've got what I want Got an idea of right I'm going to begin this uh, with red the red of these these um, big blinds um, bring in some red for these hanging blinds here and bring in some red on reflected onto the floor here um, and then whilst things are still wet i'll bring in some of this side light i was talking about which would be a bluer light um, i will uh, bring in some of this more yellow light uh, with, uh, that, that seems to be around this area of the painting and uh, all the time just trying to keep clear of these areas where i want the white light that, that that is shown in this photograph anyway to shine through so my palette is here i, I think you should all have a, a list of the colors i'm using but i i will talk them through um and I, i've got a, a brush heavy with water here and i think you can see if, if i pick up this color is vermilion um could be used, could use Windsor Red, could use Cadmium Red, colours like that, uh, and uh, so let's just put that in here. Uh, this this blind comes down to that sort of level. And um, I've also got red here, which um, I, I, I might add some crimson to that because it looks uh, a different sort of red. I think the way the light's affecting it, but there are folded up material that goes off uh, around there. Um, I've got another one now remember I'm, I'm having mine hanging all the way down so it's going to be something like that and it comes down to sort of 
that really. Now this this is wet, it, it remains wet and, and I'm happy for that to be the case. Um, and I'll see how I feel about it when I come and change it. I think I'm going to add some more yellow to this one shortly. Um, let's just, um, this, this one is billowing in the wind a bit, I think, isn't it? So it has a different shape to it. And then I've put these white boxes in. I think you might have heard me talking about that there. Um, now I've got a lot of uh, this light. As I'm um, putting in th this redness here, I'm, I'm, I'm in part running my brush over the paper. The paper I'm using is a, uh, is a 300 gram weight saunders uh cold pressed and it's got it's got a bit of a tooth to it so if i run my brush over um the the paper I, i'm i'm picking up uh i'm leaving behind little white bits which i'm i'm happy to do uh here and um try and leave these white boxes a little bit so we've we've done that uh, I want this to be more yellow, so I'm going to I'll, I'll pick up some of this colour aurelian here, and I'll bring that in over this this stage with the the paper quite wet. Um, it's very wet actually. This paper. Uh, we'll see what that's going to do, and I'm going to pick up some crimson and add that. I've talked about this being a little more crimson, so I'm going to put some crimson in here, depending on how wet your paper is, so you add it. But if, if, if you put pure colour in, it's going to work better on, on wet paper. Uh, I think I'll bring some of that crimson in here. Up the top of the painting here, um, it is really dark, but um, there is some light coming through. So I'm, I'll, I'll get some raw sienna up here. Right, I'm starting to chuck all sorts of colours into other colours. Let's just make that um, a little bigger, that pinning. And oops, I want to keep that white these white um, polystyrene boxes or whatever they are, keep them reasonably white if I can. So I'll put in a little bit of this uh, white colour here. I, I'm conscious that, um, I've, I've overstepped it here, I'm conscious that the we were talking about this level of the floor here is, is, is along there somewhere and I'll switch to this cooler blue colour. Uh, I'm using cerulean and I'll put some of that there.
It's uh, an altogether cooler light down that area and um, I might put some where these boxes are. Right, there's uh, a lot of fish being sold here, so let's just um, put in some colours, which um, may be useful to us later on. I'm going to make this a bit redder, this one. So at this stage, you can play around with these colors. I, I deliberately wanted that to be a, a little more yellow than that one, just to suggest there's a slightly different light coming through, but I think I can afford to just make this a slightly stronger red at this stage see how that goes and um, mixing up some raw sienna and maybe some burnt sienna burnt sienna a bit of raw sienna this is all going to be pretty dark up here at some point pick up that burnt sienna again and um, then my white boxes I don't lose that and there's a sort of white bit that you can see the gap you can see through here which um, you'll find at the end of the painting that we, we can redress a lot if we've gone over little bits of white that we want we can redress that uh, as much as we uh, quite a bit by just adding some white but I, I want to try and minimize on that if I can um, all right and more or less cover pretty much everything that I think isn't white. Okay, let's go, let's have a look. Right, I think that's That's uh, too strong that, but it, it, it'll find. Now, when we come to the next stage of the painting, we, we want what we've done now to be 100% dry. So at some, I, I will get a hair dryer out at some stage and, um, and make sure that's dry. So wh whenever you do come to that next stage in your painting, um, then, then it wants to be dry. So I've, Try to leave some white out here, which is the light shining through. Um, I've, I've tried to bring in some uh, cooler light here, reflect that on some of these sort of white boxes and things. Um, and, um, and reflected the, the, the redness onto the floor here at this stage. I haven't put any details in. Uh, but I think that's as much as I want to do for the second stage of the painting. Third stage step in the painting is uh, about putting in the, the darks um, and 
shadows and things like that. Um, we'll leave any fine details for the very last stage, but this is about putting the darks. And there, there are a lot of darks and lights in this painting. So, um, uh, so we've got quite a bit of work to do on this stage. I, I'm going to use, uh, are, you, are you clicked on me, Lois? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Why don't I see that? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I can see it, yeah. Um, I'm going to use uh, the brush I showed you earlier, this squirrel head mop brush. It's a smaller brush, um, but as many of you might have brushes like this, you, you know you can get a great deal of detail uh, involved in these. So, um, I, shall I begin? Please do. I'm sorry if anyone's still rushing, but, but I think I, I do need to go on. I, as much as I can, I'm going to work from the top downwards, because I'm right-handed from the top left downwards. Um, and that, that's primarily to uh, avoid ju just um, smudging things as, as we go along. Uh, so, um, in fact, I, having said that, I think the first thing I'm going to do is, is in the photograph, there's some quite nice folds in this hanging here on the left. And I want to introduce uh, some of those. Um, and, um, and I'd like that to dry because I'll come back to it later on. Uh, but, but so I'm going to do that first and then move on. So I'm uh, uh, going to pick up my, let's see, can you see the colors I'm using here? Yeah, I'm going to pick up uh, this orangey red. That, that I've got here. And um, because I'm going to be working over, it's more yellow now, I added yellow to it. I'm, I'm just wondering if um, that's going to be sufficient. So we've got, uh, we've got, what's not this in here? Try and get some idea of, folds. Um, I don't know if this is dark enough, we'll see I might go over some of it. Yeah, a little bit, a bit more maybe. Uh, watercolor is always dry, lighter than you think, so, so. So maybe, maybe that will be sufficient. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that a little later on. Adds a little bit of interest to, to that fold. Now up, up the top here, I'm going to um, start bringing in some of these dark colors. Let's, uh, let's work on these folded lines on the left here. So um, mixing some crimson with the red I already have and a bit of ultramarine blue. Yeah, I've got quite a lot of wet paint uh, going on. So I, I can bring some of that on here. Uh, and if you're able to bring in some folds, then that's great. That will sort of suggest that the material's folded a little bit like, like so. Um, whoop. Right, I'm, I'm smudging that that I've just put on. And whilst that's wet, let's just put a bit of blue in there to get that a bit darker. So 
So that's I'll just drop a little bit of I've added some more ultramarine blue to that and a bit of burnt sienna. I'll just drop in that here so that it can mix itself around. We can come back to come back to that later if we need to. There I was given a suggestion of the folds that are going on here. And then for this area up here, uh, pick up some French ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt sienna. I've, at the moment, I've got a fairly dark color. And um, right, there's, uh, there's a, um, the, the top of the hanging, let's yeah, see if we can establish some of that. I'll take it up to this lamp. Make that a bit darker by using these two colors, French ultramarine and burnt sienna and just bring some of that into, yeah, whilst it's all still a bit wet. I might go back and make some of this uh, darker still shortly um, because it, it does dry much lighter. But let's just see what we got here. Put some, some of that darkness in there. Um, at the moment, I've been using French ultramarine and burnt sienna. Um, and remember, I was leaving that light out that you can see in the uh, in the photograph. I'm going over these pillars because they're they're going to be darker anyway. Uh, right, I'm going to bring more brown into in this maybe, or maybe I'll come back a bit later and bring a bit more brown. All right, let's. So this is playing around with the shadow on these some of these pillars. And I want to soften the light on those a bit, so I've just washed my brush out and use the end of my finger and just add a bit of water to soften those out a wee bit. Uh, 
so you'll find as you're painting along that I'm said I was going to try and work downwards um, that I'm moving around quite a lot of French ultramarine blue burnt sienna um, uh, I, I think um, you're going to bring yeah So it's quite a, a, a bluey, shadowy colour at the moment. Let's just see. I'm looking at some of the architectural details just here. Um, bring it down to there. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, right, I, I think what I'll do is I'll I'm going to put the shadow in, or the, or the what you can see through through. Now that this is dry, what you can see through the hangings, um, which is very slightly different from. So so this archway here. Uh, which goes up like that. I'm going to bring my shadow down a bit. So let's just mix up a shadow color. Uh, Ultramarine blue, um, a bit of burnt sienna, and see if that's going to do the job. Right, that's going to go over this red, and it's going to be. Um, it's going to be and leave, leave that little bit of light there, which we can come back to. That suggests the, the bit that's holding up the hanging. Uh, and we can come say, Where's that go to? To about, to about there, isn't it? Oops, that's a bit bigger. And similarly on the other one. Those are those two shapes that I particularly liked. Seems I'm going to do something back here with the third window space. What's happening here? Um, I'm 
quite sure what's happening there, but let's see if that will do something. Right, I'm still moving on down here. Someone's asking how you mix the colour for the drapes on the left. These, uh, I just, I went back to my red and I pretty much used the red really uh, over the, what I had made more orangey, just, just to see, just to um, show a slight difference. Um, I, I don't know whether they will do enough because I smudged it with my, my hand. So I, if necessary, I'll go back to it, but I'll, I'll wait and see. Uh, it, it may not matter. Uh, I'll, I'll just wait and see. Uh, right, uh, let's carry on with making things darker at this stage. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to, I'll, I'll work across a bit, so I try and avoid smudging myself. I'm, um, ultramarine blue and let's just see what, what's happening over here. Um, There is some light coming from down here, so I think I might just suggest, uh, up until to now we've been looking at contra jour light against the dark. Um, and things have been pretty silhouetted or dark, but there's, there's something going on here. So I'll just let that dry a little bit and come back to that. Um, move around. This is not detail I'm putting in here. This is um, just making it darker and adding any other colors that I may want, want to deal with. Let's, um, uh, So I'm popping in some uh, brown here, which I'll add some darks to, which is um, a suggestion of uh, the containers that the, the fish are in, that people are, are buying from. Um, and it all gets a bit confused as to what's happening here. So we, we leave lots of little gaps. Uh, and And similarly, the more the more little spaces you can leave showing around, you can always fill them in later. The, the more useful that might be to you. Um, Let's I wanted to show some of the light coming around here and I've, I've painted over it 
for the moment. So I'll, I'll come back to that when it's a little drier um, and just. Now you'll all have different things happening on your papers, uh, your paintings, and you're essentially just working your way around the market uh, and putting in things and making them darker. We can come in with details a little later on. And, and in a moment, I'm going to put in some of the reflections on the ground, but but I'll wait till I come down to that. Uh, is this dry enough yet to suggest? Maybe it is. A little bit there. There's the lighting above the fish. It gets a bit hazy as to what's happening here, but we'll, we'll just put in some dark areas. Uh, there's quite a lot of fairly flat browns I put in here, so I'm, I'm going to drop some little bits of pure blue in um, to just to make it more interesting and, and it'll paint itself. I'm trying to keep these white areas here, uh, which um, are the light shining through. I'll take it up to so let's have a look at let's have a look at now um, what's happening with the reflections uh, around here. Um, it's it's mostly red reflections on here. We can picking up a little bit of blue light coming through here, uh, and and so for this I'm going uh, I'll go back to a red add a bit of crimson, that's the, the vermilion, add a bit of crimson, and that's much too red at the moment. So let's take a little bit of blue into that. That, that makes it quite purple. Um, put a little bit of sienna with that. No, not that, back to the blue. So I've, I've got something, um, a mixture of sort of reds with the the, the um, vermilion and the crimson and then a little bit of blue and uh, so let's just see if we can put in this let's start with this fellow here he, his legs are going to come down here so we can we, we can do uh, something like like this uh, there's um there's a reflection that's coming from, uh, there's a man here as well, he's reflecting, the wheel is reflecting a little bit. Uh, there's, uh, there's quite a lot of reflections around here. Now, I'm 
adding some a blue just to darken up some of those reflections and, and vary them a little bit. We're going to come back to this man and paint him into the reflections, but here, here he can be a detail. Uh, here, uh, I'm trying to get the idea of, uh, we can soften some of them maybe with a dry, with a brush that's clean and just a little bit of, uh, I might even, I might even add a little bit of red there just to, bit of water just a little bit here just to um, soften some of the areas up. That's moving into what's blue there, a little bit under here. I go back to some of my darks, um, take some of that. Paint over the wheel, that's all going to go uh, darker. And um, bring some of the red color into here, maybe. That's my white box. I want to try and keep white for the moment. This is um, sort of the shadow areas under those fish tanks. You can pretty much make this up as as much as you can as you go along. Um, I'll be bringing in some some blue here in a moment, but um, I think that should be should be enough. Right. Let's go around and add any more dark areas before we come back with our details. So I'll go back to my French ultramarine, a little bit of burnt sienna, and see what do I want to do to add in uh, what's going on here. This is I haven't put any of the figures in yet. Um, I'll deal with those in a moment. And in these white boxes, this big white box here, that's it's got a sort of shadow that comes See if we can get that to work when we come into the details. Uh, I was talking about not getting too too detailed when you come to the edges of the painting. So let's just see what we're going to get out of that. Something, some boxes. There's just some sort of shadows. They are white boxes, so I'll keep the shadows uh, quite light. Right, now what else do I need to do? What's happening here? Let's put a bit of, um, put a bit of that shadow in. And um, my bucket, I've, I've just put some, pretty much water there and, and uh, I mix up a shadow colour and make that a bit darker and put that on the other side of the bucket. Let's 
strong movement. This little finger there should soften that edge and um, Okay, uh, anything else? I think that's pretty much, there's a palette here, so I'll just stick a little bit of that color and we'll, we'll put some shadows in there. And I'll worry about this wheel and all the other little bits and pieces um in a moment yeah that's that's really where i've got to on the third stage putting in uh the dark areas and we just come into it now and and finish it with uh the details okay uh so so this is where we're going to bring in the details um there'll be quite a number of quite darks in this. Also right at the end, some, some lights. Um, I'm going to stick with this brush because I think I can get a lot of the fine detail with this smaller squirrel mop brush. But if necessary, I will at some stage do something with, with that rigger. Again, I'll, I'll work from uh, top left down as much as I can to avoid Uh, smudging things. Um, right, so ultramarine blue I will pick up and I will bring in burnt sienna. So this is where I'm getting my, if I want to make this even darker, I'll bring in some neutral tint and I might do that from time to time. Um, I, I, it, a Payne's grey is a similar colour to this, but, uh, but I'm reluctant to use too much of that. It can be a bit of a add a bit of a flatness to your uh, to, to the painting. So I'm, I'm mixing up a, a dark colour and I'm trying to make it really quite a strong uh, mixture of paint. So deliberately adding paint and taking the water out of my brush and seeing where we'll go with that. Uh, I, I'm, I, I think with this one, I'll just leave that for a little bit. I'll come back to that little a uh, bit, yeah, or or maybe I won't. Uh, I'll I'll do I'll do something here. So I'm going to bring some darker shadow down this side. But having mixed up that dark colour, I won't do it now. I'll 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 just mix up another not quite so dark version of that, um, and um, and I'll. I'll bring it down this side of this column here. And that, that's a very sharp edge. So take uh, the paint out of the brush, just run, r run a dark, uh, a damp, line there and, and that will add to that. Uh, I think whilst I'm there I'll um, this is something I could have done in the last time round. Um, as with all this water scan you're, you're, you're aware of how much water is on uh, the paper or on your brush um, and okay so I'm going to go back to my dark color here and see what I can really dark and if I want to make it dark I'll add a little bit of uh, let's just have a look what do I need to do um, So 
I'm using uh, the points of this mop brush. I'm getting uh, quite a lot of detail in on this. Um, There's a palette to turn, so I'll just make some suggestion of shape. And wherever I want to bring in a little bit of extra detail, uh, I'll do that at this stage. Um, this, this trolley here. A little bit of that tar in. Right, some of these figures. These three guys are all facing um, facing us. So I'm just going to pop in a bit of skin there, so, and um, and also this chap here has got some sort of apron on. Uh, ideally, I should have left that, put that in as a bit of blue. So I'll see if I can achieve that. Mike, he's yeah. got his back to us and his hands behind himself holding a napkin behind him. Yeah, bottom. I know he is. I've turned him around. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Beg your pardon. I've deliberately turned around to walk. He's walking towards us. Oh, beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah, that was one of the few changes uh, I, I, I made at the start. So, um, let's... Uh, Put this this chap. Um, uh, he he's actually silhouetted a bit more than. Um, than in the photograph, so we'll deal with this fella here. He's um. You can get away with suggesting the human form with. Um, very few marks. And your man here. He's sort of walking towards us. And he's got an apron on, isn't he? Yeah. I'll try and recreate him and have him left that out. He's on his way. If you can keep people's legs as 
indistinct as you can. They just let them, particularly if they can work their way, um, in this case, into the reflections, then, then you're not drawing attention to, to that aspect. I don't know whether I can, um, if I try and create um, something a bit different with this apron, I, or maybe I just left it too late. Just, just something like that. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. He's got an apron on, as a lot of these these people do when they're selling fish. Understandably. Um, I was just seeing if I could get some uh, an idea of the folds. In there, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what that comes up with. Uh, right. Um, there's a pillar, a great big pillar that comes down here. So some ultramarine blue, get some of this burnt uh, burnt umber, really dark colour. I'll put this down and if necessary I'll add some neutral tint to it too. Um, uh, pillow sort of runs down here. The, these little things that show some light coming through, I'll see if I can keep those intact. Um, And that pillar comes down this way. Uh, so I'm going to make that pillar darker by bringing some neutral tint into it. And break it up a little bit as it comes down here. So there's suggestions there might be some light. Uh, add a bit more darkness to that. And, and here I'm just adding to the jamboree of marks that uh, are silhouetted because of us being against the light. We've got um, various legs of furniture at this stage. Make these guys a bit darker. And this is one of these things that holds a lamp. We're going to bring some light onto this in a moment um, with, with some white paint. But um, not just yet.
So this is very much darker color. Um, and it's quite strong paint. And I want it to stand out because we've got a lot of darkness in this scene. I want it to stand out. Um, switch to my rigger for some of these fine lines. This is the trolley and the structure that's holding up something, whatever that is at the back. I'll come back, we'll come to this trolley in a moment. Someone spoke about drawing in lines and things on uh, the floor here. So let's do some of that now. Uh, again, I'm using my dark color um, and, uh, and, and also helping to create the idea of the perspective of the lines. But I, I want to do as little as possible, really. I can bring in some lighter bits later on. Right, let's continue around here. Uh, right, we've got some people uh, to deal with. Let's just pop in some of their details now. A few chaps and ladies shopping. Um, he's very much silhouetted this guy. And this fellow as well. Shoulders. I'm switching my attention up to this lamp up here now. And um, Put in some of this structure of it. Make that quite dark. I'll come back to that now. I just want that to dry a little bit. And similarly, this one. Again, I'll come back to that one in a moment. 
Let's um, move across the top a little bit. My people again. I'll come back to those. There's another pillar. In fact, I left it out. Let's see what we can do with that. And the, the man that I put in there earlier, I've managed to smudge him, so I'll just come back over him again. This other pillar, which I left out, mix up a dark colour. And let's put that in. bringing some neutral tint into that just to make that dark and that goes behind the boxes so makes the boxes stand out a bit more someone's silhouetted here shopping there is someone here as well but uh, I'll come back to them in a moment shopping We've got various stands underneath the fish tanks. I think I want to make this area here a bit darker, um, which would have been useful to have done that before. So it's just, and it comes up to the white box as well. So The 
the boxes here. Let's just give them a bit of presence. And and this trolley someone mentioned earlier. Um, let's put the wheel in. and some of the structures underneath it. I, I, I don't want to make too much of this. And I'm going to finish off just by bringing some whites in and um, from from a tube of gouache here. But before I do, I'll, I'll return to these lamps that I said I was going to. Um, let's, let's just take some of the they're, they're in the darkness, so it's just make them not stand out quite so much. Yeah, they, they get a bit lost up there now. Right, and, and now bring in some of the lights. So this is gouache, this is using clean water, this is using my rigger brush. And um, popping in, so someone said that they'd filled in uh, a, a lot of the whites they wanted. Well, here you can go to a, a certain way to reclaiming um, that by, by putting in uh, some whites here. Uh, generally, I'd say try and do this as little as you can. But I'm just, just um, with a with a figure. You know, quite often, you just a little bit of um, light on top of the head and a bit on the shoulders, and 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 you've made a figure here. Let's just put a little bit on this chap. And yeah, he's he's not. He he can have more. So can he. Um, so we've got this is gouache, it's very opaque paint, um, and try and use it as sparingly as possible. There was an area here that I painted over with the red, which was under the tables. So um, what is your um, brand and shade of white gouache, please? Uh, it's Windsor & Newton Designers Gouache, permanent white. Um, so I'm going to bring in these lights here, which we sh see shining uh, down onto the fish and and a, com and a combination of some of that light shining down onto um, objects will just bring in one or two little marks that See 
we'll do as little as we can to get away. But there is light reflected. Um, there's a, quite a strong light here. where it's touching metal bits. Yeah. So using this white gouache will, uh, you know, the, the person who had a problem with having filled them in, you, you see, see how you get on with making, making that resolve your problem a bit. There's a woman there shopping. And maybe a few. We've already got some marks left of the paper right at the start where we didn't paint it in, but um, we wanted to bring uh, some more marks in. You, you could do so. Um, 